Morning, boys. Good morning, guys. They seem to be absolutely loving life. And uh, as you can see, they're shouting at me because they want their food. So we better feed them. So our 50 calves that we've got uh, that came in last week, they've been here uh, four or five days now. They've settled in really well. Um, they all feed on the teat feeders, which is really good because that would have been a bit of an issue if they didn't. So I'll just take you through this morning how we feed them, what we do, and and uh, yeah, you'll be able to see see all the calves feeding. So here's the feeding rig. Craig made this traffic cone funnel thing because pouring milk in that there with a bucket is uh, not very easy and it makes a hell of a mess. So we've got this cone. It's also easy to put the powder in as well. We always leave the IBC half, I say half filled, half filled with the amount of um, water that we'll need for a feed just so we've got something to mix the powder into. Uh, as Craig found out at the weekend, it's actually easier if you mix some of the powder up in a yellow bucket to start. So we'll do that and uh, yeah, we'll make a start on feeding the carbs. So each morning we use one whole bag of powder. So that, that's 20 kilos in there. So one whole bag plus three jugs. Here's a jug. Three jugfuls um, out of another bag. And all that mixed into 200 liters or made up to 200 liters, I should say of water in the IBC is the correct amount of feed for them. So we'll do that. That's why I have two bags there because one of them will go in and we can start another one with the jug. device. Mix up some in a bucket like this and just tip it into this cone here. Well, that didn't quite go to plan. The vet turned up to TB test some cows um, and they're actually on the off farm, so I was just giving him directions a minute, but um, all the powder is now in the IBC. We then take our stupidly long paddle that I made and stick in there and uh, basically just whisk it up until it's not lumpy anymore. So I whisk it up for a bit and then I add a bit more water and then I whisk it again. But you basically got to whisk it for three or four minutes. Make sure all the powder's mixed in with all the water. And then you can start feeding. That's basically all mixed now. Just topping it off with a little bit more water. Um, they're on four litres each at the moment of milk. And so what we do is we put 200 litres in there, obviously there's 50 calves, 200 litres, um, which is level to that silver bar. So that just needs a little bit more water, the tap's not very fast, it'll take a minute. Yesterday, me, John and Phil, we sorted all the calves out into age order, so these are our youngest guys down this end, these guys are the middle group obviously, and then we've got the older ones at the end here. There is quite an age difference, so some of them are only a fortnight old, or 15 days old down that end. Um, and some of these guys are getting on for five or six weeks old. So the reason we sorted them out like that was obviously we can plan to start weaning these guys a bit earlier um, and hopefully get them eating a bit more creep and a bit more um, dry fodder a bit sooner than the other guys down here. There's the pet one in the corner, the white one. He's quite friendly, he's back there chilling out during his cud. You guys all want your milk, don't you? Yeah, you know what's happening. So uh, you would have seen when I'd done the last video when we were setting all this up, we had the feeders in the pens. Turns out they like to beat them up. So the feeders are currently over there. And then in a minute, when I bring the forklift and the IBC of milk over here, 
uh, we'll put the feeders in and um, and feed them and then once they finish take them out and wash them big fan out on the weekend if you park the IBC in the middle of the two pens you can actually feed two pens without having to move so that's quite handy as well so we haven't got to uh, keep moving the forklift works really well with the IBC on the forklift as long as the forklift starts that is the um, deciding factor of how well the morning goes but it's been brilliant so far you see that little black line there is our uh, target milk line we're just about on it now so I'll turn the water off I'll give it one final mix and then we'll feed the hungry calves guy's a bit of an idiot but they're all feeding we go feed those guys now make sure we shut him in Two pens down, one to go. Here we are in the forklift. So, got on the brake, handbrake off, backwards. Good to, good to be safe. last lot to try and get the rest of the milk out lift it up a bit higher and actually tilt it down over a bit as I mentioned in the uh, setup video the IBC is chained to the forklift so it can't fall off so uh, get this last feeder and there we have it last lot of carbs drinking these guys guzzle milk incredibly quickly you see how low their feed has got already come on mate come on go find a seat atta boy the first day that we had them on the milk um, there was two or three that um, wouldn't go on the teat straight away but the more that we fought them and the more we tried to get them on the teat the less they wanted to go on it so we sort of found out that if you just leave them to it, they're happy as Larry. And as we know, Larry was happy. So there they are, they're having a whale of a time. In a minute, we'll um, put a bit of creep in their troughs. I bedded them up and filled up their hay racks yesterday afternoon, so they'll be all right for a little while.
starting to rain. I'll have to put you inside for a minute. GoPros do not like water. Actually, GoPros don't mind water. My microphone doesn't like water. So, just fix you on here. Did you hear that? Silence. Happy calves. So they quite often uh, go to their creep feeders after they've had their milk. See there's a few of them back there feeding. This guy back here was just feeding. Or they come and have a bit of hay. So what I do is I let them sort of chill out for a bit whilst I'm doing all my washing up. And then we'll put some creep in their feeders. But uh, this is the sort of state they come out of the pens in. Covered in straw. We get our hose here, just give them a bit of a rinse. This is one of those fancy hoses that's got uh, all the different settings. I think I want center. There you are. So basically all I do is wash off all the debris off the outside, which takes a minute, but Right, so now leave that filling up for a minute. And then once you get them like this, so they've got a bit of water in, all the teats are covered. I'll go and get myself my little sponge and uh, start cleaning them out. Just give them a nice scrub inside, make sure they are all clean. Because even though they can look clean, they can be covered in like salivary, skimmy stuff and it's a bit gross. So somewhere over here. I've got my scrubber. And then what we'll do is a couple times a week, um, they're fairly light and easy to move. I just take them down to the pressure washer and wash them with a bit of heat. Kill any bugs that's on them. We need to do that for each one. Right, last thing you do is just draw a bit of water out the teats like so. You can see the bubbles, that means there's water coming through. Just cleans out any milk that might be left in them. Right, so everything is now clean and back inside. The feeders are over there behind the gate. I've got to fill the IBC up again with some water this morning, but other than that, we were uh, move on to the creep feed. So with the creep feed, um, we want them to have ad lib access to it all the time. Um, they don't gorge themselves, which is good. So we got this uh, feed, feed here from Mole Valley. Um, I don't you know what? I think it's an 18% creep feed. Yeah, 18% protein feed. Um, it's a special calf nut, so it's only little pellets. And basically, what I do is I get this white bucket. I put a white bucket full in every pen every morning. A lot of them are in what I call the milk coma stage. So they've had a gut full of milk. They just want to relax for a bit, but there should be a bit of creep left in the trough. Oh, these guys have eaten it all. Whew. So these little piggies had eaten all theirs. They're the young group as well, so they're doing well to eat that. See, these guys have got a little bit left in their trough, so we'll get them a bucket full as well. And the same for the other end. Hey, buddies. I always make a point of pushing these gates a bit further in than they need to go. Just to try and keep the straw away from them so they're never difficult to shut when you've got one hand. Right, we'll get another bucket full. Piggies are eating all theirs as well. Hey, how are you? Well done, calves. Another successful feeding. If it's not raining, I like to leave these um, blinds up as they are. 
um, just so they got a bit of air blowing through the shed. You want plenty of ventilation for calves. Obviously they get things like pneumonia and other respiratory diseases um, when they're young and that can affect them going forward in their growing stages. So try and keep them as happy and as healthy as we can. We've got plenty of air that comes through the end of that shed. Um, and then equally, if it gets really cold, we can always shut the blinds down. I do shut the doors just because if they escape, there are slurry grids out the back here and little legs and slurry grids do not match very well. We're supposed to have about nine or 10 dry days of weather after today, which would be good for trying to get the, uh, the oats in the ground that we've got left to do here. We've got 50 acres of oats to drill. I need to fill up that IVC a minute. But we did have a horrendous amount of rain last night. Um, we had a load at home as well. I'll put some a video clip up now of the rain we had at home last night. It's really annoying. We're on a new housing estate uh, where we live and we've been there about 18 months. Some of the other people have been there nearly two years and they still haven't tarmacked that road. Um, and so all of the drains um, are higher than the level of the road. So when we get heavy rain, the water all runs down the hill to our house and doesn't go down any of the drains because they're all higher than the road, which is really, really useful. So. We keep moaning at Kia, who are the house builders, who have actually now sold their house building um, part of their company to someone called Tiller Homes or Tiller Homes. We keep moaning at them, but nothing ever seems to be done. So I don't know what you can do. You can only moan so much. Just open up this door. There's a fireman's hose on a reel by our cattle loading ramp over there, which has got a much higher volume of water um, than the little hose pipe we've got in the shed here. So we use that one to fill the IBC up. I won in the end. We'll just jump on the forklift and we'll put about 100 litres of water in the IBC. Here's Mrs. Lane Cow. Morning Cow. How are you doing? She's quite happy. She's chilling out. Come on, baby. Never in doubt. If I remember correctly, I left this turned on that end. There we are. I'll just stick that down. In there for a bit. Right guys, so that is us about done. I've just got to fill this IBC up and then I'll be on to my next jobs. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you have any hints or tips or tricks you might think we've missed with feeding the calves, please do leave a comment below. Um, I don't think I mentioned we're feeding the powder at 125 grams uh, a litre at the moment. We're going to see how that goes. Um, I know where I worked previously we actually fed a little bit more than that. Um, but the calves seem really happy and healthy at the minute, so we'll, we'll keep them on that for the time being and see how they do. So if you have enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, then please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, you can see a lot more of what goes on here at Northwick every day. If you follow me on any of my social media accounts, they'll be on the bottom of the screen now. Uh, if you're interested in buying any JM Farming merch, we've got hats, we've got beanies, which coming up to winter now might be useful, uh, hoodies, which are really nice and thick, and also t-shirts. Um, they're all really good quality. If you would like one of those, send me a message again on any one of my socials. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on another video very soon. Cheerio.